Good. Is that dark enough for everyone? Um, all right, good morning, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, I'm Chuck, a fourth year resident from the program here at UBC. And uh, this morning, I'd like to talk about uh, the dilemma of the negative prostate biopsy. Tough start to the day. Uh, thanks. The objectives for my talk are to discuss the investigative and diagnostic tools uh, briefly for prostate cancer, evaluate the transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy, determine uh, the prognostic and suspicious findings on prior biopsies leading to uh, repeat biopsy, evaluate further methods uh, for prostate cancer biopsy, and also explore the role of MRI in a negative biopsy. Uh, just to uh, bring this situation to light, a, a quick uh, case study. A uh, 62 year old, year old Caucasian male with an elevated PSA. PSA um, uh, was elevated, no lower urinary tract symptoms, no hematuria. Um, he's otherwise healthy and has a strong family history of prostate cancer. A quick brief overview of his. Um, <clears throat> of his uh, medical uh, history, PSA was elevated 5.1 had a suspicious DRE led to a negative, led to a biopsy which was negative. Uh, PSA was repeated, uh, uh, elevated to 6.2 again led uh, to a biopsy which again was negative. Uh, he came back to clinic with a repeat PSA of 7.4, uh, was started on 5 al alpha reductase inhibitor, and uh, uh, seven months later. His uh, PSA was unchanged and elevated, uh, which led to a further, uh, a third negative biopsy. Um, so uh, looking at the options um, in management for this patient um, uh, observation, sorry, digesteride, he was already on a transperineal biopsy um, using MRI uh, adjuncts or uh, exploring MRI ultrasound fusion. Uh, the main reason for this uh, uh, topic uh, this morning I was I've, I've done a project with Dr. So looking at our experience with negative biopsies here uh, in Vancouver. Uh, we have a, a, a 20 years worth of uh, uh, biopsies to look at. Uh, overall we had 70 patients with at least two prior neg negative biopsies. Um, 52 of them um, underwent two negative biopsies uh, up to uh, one of the patients underwent seven negative biopsies before uh, getting a diagnosis of uh, prostate cancer. <laughs> Poor guy. <clears throat> um, interestingly, uh, looking at the Gleason score from the uh, following uh, positive result, um, pretty even across um, uh, low, intermediate, and high grade. Uh, 20 patients had a Gleason score less than seven, 30. Gleason score of seven and 20 actually had a, a Gleason score uh, greater than seven. Uh, looking at our numbers, we found that uh, ASAP was a significant risk factor for um, a disease on the repeat biopsy. Uh, rising PSA and PSA velocity were also significant. And um, uh, interestingly, the number of uh, previous biopsies did not predict for Gleason score or tumor volume. We found that uh, there was a high number of intermediate and high risk uh, prostate cancers diagnosed. Um, and also, um, in the era of uh, is PSA uh, useful um, in this type of situation, it can be following a PSA uh, um, leading to uh, a diagnosing prostate cancer in a following biopsy. So, um, a few brief words about prostate cancer most common non cutaneous cancer in men third leading cause of male cancer mortality. Uh, autopsy studies show uh, one in three men over the age of 50 do have evidence of prostate cancer, although 80 are clinically significant. Life lifetime risk of death from prostate cancer is 3%. Lifetime risk of diagnosis is 13. Um, some of the screening tools that we have um, uh, for uh, prostate cancer, the digital rectal exam, um, 
uh, it's been stated positive predictive value between 5 and 33 uh, percent. PSA of, uh, and looking at PSA, um, PSA greater than 4, uh, positive predictive value between 18 and 30 percent. What was your PSA before that? <laughs> 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 what was your half? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it's not so bad. <laughs> Um, uh, combined DRE and PSA between uh, and a PSA between four and ten uh, can give a positive predictive value of anywhere between 33 and 88 percent. So prostate biopsy, some say it's uh, looking for a needle in a haystack. The genius on the right thought it'd be a good idea to uh, test it out, and his goal was to either find the needle in the haystack or, if he got enough publicity, he would stop. So he got publicity, so he stopped, so he never found the needle. Uh, history of prostate biopsy. Um, in the 30s, uh, Ferguson performed the first transperineal prostate needle biopsy. Um, in 37 was the first transrectal. 1989, the sextant uh, trust guided biopsy um, uh, was in routine use, and uh, not till the late 90s where the, the 10 to 14 core biopsies performed. Uh, biopsy indications. Uh, initial biopsy is for an elevated PSA or a suspicious DRE. Looking at the repeat biopsy, um, uh, indications are rising and or persistently elevated PSA. Um, again, suspicious uh, digital rectal exam. Uh, ASAP finding on the previous biopsy, as well as extensive pin. Uh, no longer um, do they say that uh, you know single uh, core of high grade pin is uh, is an indication for a repeat biopsy. Uh, talking about repeat biopsies, just a quick slide of uh, actual complications that may occur from um, the biopsy itself. Metaspermia, the most common, hematuria, rectal bleeding, prostatitis, uh, the one we all worry about, um, fever greater than 38, epididymitis, um, rectal bleeds requiring intervention, um, can also have yeah, urinary retention. So, this was the initial paper looking at um, uh, serial biopsies that kind of brought this all to light, uh, Catalona looked at uh, over 2,500 patients. Um, patients uh, were uh, at a P elevated PSA and they looked at these patients um, uh, throughout serial biopsies and all included had one or more negative biopsies. So cancer detection rates, 29% um, um, of uh, prostate cancer was detected on the first biopsy, um, 17 on the second and going down uh, found uh, that 7% uh, um, were found even on the sixth biopsy. These were sextant biopsies. These were original sextant biopsies. Yeah, this was the original um, stuff. Um, so later we'll talk about the 12 core biopsy um, and um, and detection rates. Just, uh, exploring further this uh, the data that they found, um, breaking up the groups between PSA 2.5 and 4, uh, and then greater than 4. Um, there wasn't a huge uh, difference between actual um, detection uh, of cancers. The numbers were quite similar, 28% uh, to 30%. Looking at the slide, the graph on the left, out of all these cancers detected, 77% um, uh, uh, were detected on this uh, first biopsy. So I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, risk assessment for REIT-B biopsy. Uh, things that we can look at. Uh, so about 30 percent, they say, for negative, yeah, false negative. What, what, what of the biopsies you do? What is the percentage of correctness in the area that you're getting the biopsy from? Uh, it's difficult to measure. Now it's being measured because of the enhanced imaging that we can do. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later with the uh, MRI and, and ultrasound uses. Well, that's the whole idea. We don't don't know where 
biopsy, I guess. Um, so some of the things that we can look at in order to push yourself towards a repeat biopsy. Uh, PSA density, uh, highest, uh, higher PSA density uh, leads to a higher detection and grade. You can look at PSA density of the transition zone. Um, this uh, helps uh, increase the sensitivity to rule out BPH. We have free to total PSA and well as PSA3. PCA3, sorry. Um, uh, a big study um, uh, done on, uh, con on consecutive repeat biopsies over a, a thousand men. Uh, they looked at all these um, uh, predictors, seeing what would be the strongest um, predictor for a future positive biopsy. Um, they found that uh, free to total uh, PSA was the uh, strongest prognostic factor for predicting prostate cancer on the following biopsy. Um, the mean uh, free to total ratio was 15%. Um, in the analysis, uh, uh, free to total were significant, uh, PSA density were significant, and also uh, PSA density of the transitional zone. The, uh, looking at the PCA3 um, assay uh, for uh, repeat biopsy, um, uh, it's been uh, investigated um, and it shows an uh, area under the, of the receiver operating curve of uh, uh, 0.68 um, uh, compared to 0.52 for uh, PSA. Uh, obviously the higher uh, PCA3 um, is a higher chance of um, a repeat biopsy. Found that the cutoff of uh, 35 for the PCA uh, PCA3 test was uh, the best balance between sensitivity and specificity. Um, at the uh, looking at the reduced trial briefly, um, uh, PCA3 was um, the uh, the best predictor amongst um, uh, free to total and PSA. Uh, staying with uh, the reduced uh, trial brief, we just wanted to touch on using 5 alpha reductase inhibitors and um, the uh, usefulness of the uh, looking at PSA with uh, predicting um, uh, future uh, biopsy. I uh, found that uh, with this uh, study, baseline uh, PSA was a poor predictor. Um, the initial decrease, so your 6 uh, to 12 month decrease in PSA, um, was uh, poor predicting the positive repeat biopsy. Um, and uh, found that the final PSA and PSA velocity did perform better um, on the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor versus placebo in the higher grades of disease. Um, so the big, uh, the most significant finding from this uh, predicting a, a future positive biopsy was found to be um, the PSA change uh, from the six-month time to the uh, final PSA in detecting uh, clinically significant um, disease uh, versus placebo. So um, uh, using a 5-alpha um, reductase inhibitor, um, its use can uh, decrease the number of false positive PSA signals, reducing the risk of diagnosing lower grade uh, prostate cancer and enhancing the diagnosis of the higher grade disease. And those are the patients obviously not responding. some of the pathologic findings on um, uh, biopsy um, that can lead to uh, future uh, positive results. Um, High-grade PIN, um, it's no longer uh, considered an indication for a repeat biopsy unless it's extensive or biopsied in multiple sites. Um, uh, the risk of uh, prostate cancer on repeat biopsy within one year of diagnosis of high-grade PIN is found to be uh, uh, Eighteen percent in, in several studies, uh, which is uh, similar to the uh, same risk from uh, finding prostate cancer uh, in a, a purely benign uh, diagnosis. Um, atypical small as in our proliferation, uh, proliferation is a much different story. Um, uh, it is uh, 
been found to have uh, similar um, uh, results as uh, uh, finding cancer, um, uh, revealing prostate cancer on repeat biopsy in 34 to 60 percent, uh, considered a precursor to prostate cancer. Uh, biopsy is recommended within uh, three to six months of, uh, of this finding. Looking at prostate biopsy, we can uh, look at a couple of things. You can look at the number and location of cores. Um, obviously, looking at the original. Can I ask a question? Go back one slide, So, I'm not sure how many other people. I mean, if I had isolated it ASAP, does everybody else go ahead and biopsy at that time? I, in the absence of other risk factors, I would just be reassuring. So, is anybody else using that recommendation to go ahead and biopsy right away? Well, it's for six months. Not immediately, but uh, usually three to six months, based on Epstein's. Uh, it's from often, not later. <laughs> like, like they did radicals on everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can make a point on ASAP. It's not a term that I use. Um, yeah. That focus, for example, you're showing there, on like a Gestalt basis, looks like cancer. Now, I might end up calling it a little less than cancer, but I'd call it suspicious. That's the term that I use. If I say suspicious, I would then my, my probability level is you know ninety percent plus that it is cancer, but it's something less than a three. No, out of three. No, 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 no. If that did, if one came to the conclusion that that's cancer, that would be a decent score six. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's a pattern three. Oh, I thought you said less than three. No, that's what I mean. It's a pattern. Yeah, I guess my point is that. You know, we, we aren't acting on too many threes out of the region box. Here you are picking up something that is mm -hmm. not even a three. And we pattern three, and, and, and we're going ahead and reboxing again. So I, I guess I, I'm pulling away from the trigger more and more because we're observing these low risk ones anyways in the absence of other features. I just think that we're re biopsying too many Yeah, well, I think that's, yeah, that's fair. I think that's. You, so you tell the cancer you find on the on the second biopsy after ASAP, not necessarily. Kind of no, and, and also not to leave the faith. It's something I might call suspicious, and it, it could be a four. This particular one, hour, it's a three, but uh, it could be could have four in it. For sure. You know, like I can say one thing like that, really. It's just that it's suspicious, uh, but drops below my threshold for being able to make a definitive diagnosis. The criteria for ASAP in the pathology world are not well-defined, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> it's sort of like radiology when they say it's suspicious for them. So what are you supposed to do? So when you tell me that it's suspicious, what am I supposed to do? Well, to my mind, you're, you're supposed to think that there's a very good chance cancer's on board, but I can't arrive at a different <coughs> diagnosis with the evidence at hand. I, I don't use that term lightly. I use it when I'm suspicious of a 90% probability in my own mind of evaluating a needle biopsy. So, so suspicious is leaning towards a needle biopsy? Well, that's suspicious just a that clinical been management. Missed. I mean, if you want to find the cancer, yes. <laughs> so just we can, can I ask, is somebody new reading biopsies? Because I never used to see ASAP, and now I'm seeing ASAP. I don't know if anybody else is having this experience, but I'm seeing ASAP more suddenly. Well, no, we nobody used to be pathologist dependent. So is, there, is, it, is that, pet, is there is somebody different reading the biopsies now? Um, well, there are possibly there may be some. I think, the, I think the idea of just presenting this is the fact that, yeah, it, it, um, it ASAP is detected and so probably, you know, a, a higher Gleason score is in there, just hasn't, didn't get detected. Um, so looking at uh, types of biopsy, originally there was this, the six stamp biopsy. Um, we talked about before, detection rate of approximately 20 to 30 percent, high false negative rate between 30 and 40 percent. The, 12, the 10 to 12 core biopsy, which we'll I'll explore, um, a higher detection rate of 40%, lower false negative rate. Um, this work was originally done by Levine when 
Um, he uh, <coughs> performed the, the six stand biopsies uh, and then brought his patients back uh, for a second six stand biopsy and found that uh, the higher detection rate. Uh, so just a schematic um, representation of uh, the uh, six stand extended um, biopsy, which is uh, 10 to 12 or even 14, and then um, looking at the uh, saturation biopsy, which is uh, greater than 20 cores. Um, the extended biopsy um, is the uh, pretty much the regular six stand biopsy with four additional cores from the lateral um, uh, peripheries of the uh, of the prostate. Increased detection rate anywhere up to between uh, the 25 percent. Um, this was a, a large systematic review looking at the um, different types of biopsies and detection rates. Um, in this study, it was measured by relative positivity rates, uh, cancer detection rates, uh, on ex uh, the extended saturation and uh, regular biopsies. Um, so we're looking at uh, reading relative positivity, positivity rates, uh, an RPR of, of uh, 1.33 um, is uh, compared to uh, the normal, which is a 6 out of 1.0, so it's a 33% chance more of uh, prostate cancer. We'll look at the numbers here. Um, uh, most reported results uh, found that um, with extended 12-core biopsies with a PSA of uh, between uh, 4 and 10, had uh, detection rates anywhere between 40 and 45%. Um, the chance of um, of uh, finding prostate cancer on the repeat biopsy of these extended biopsies were um, uh, up to 24%. Uh, um, looking at the RPRs, uh, again, uh, one for a six stent biopsy, and then uh, the numbers are pretty similar from um, 10 to uh, up to the uh, saturation biopsies. Uh, throughout all the, all the papers, um, found there was no significant difference between the uh, extended uh, prostate biopsy and the saturation uh, biopsy, which is the uh, 18 to 22 core type biopsy. Um, in uh, the. Was there a difference in terms of, were they all, uh, was there a difference in higher risk, you know, intermediate or high risk cancers as you increase? Uh, I have a few things at, at the end uh, talking about that, but uh, overall, uh, Epstein, like uh, using most of these uh, papers, discuss clinically significant uh, disease with Epstein's criteria, and uh, there was uh, no uh, no significant difference between uh, detection. Um, again, uh, uh, comparing the six stent biopsy to the extended uh, or saturated, found that. Anterior apex was uh, most commonly missed in the sex uh, biopsy, uh, where uh, some studies quoted 15% um, uh, of uh, prostate cancer detection. Uh, so looking at uh, repeat biopsies on these uh, extended or saturation uh, type biopsies, 2,500 uh, patients uh, found, again, the numbers are consistent, uh, approximately 40% to check on the first biopsy, 18% uh, on the second, and uh, uh, Fourteen percent on the fourth. A uh, paper showed that um, uh, ASAP had a, again a, uh, just as high as risk for prostate cancer in the next biopsy. And uh, to Dr. Glee's question, eighty-five percent of these were found clinically significant on the re on the first repeat biopsy. So look, well, Ep using Epstein's criteria. So PSA density less than 0.15. Uh, uh, no biopsy glue score less less than six, uh, presence of tumor in uh, no more than two cores, and less than 50% of each core. Uh, uh, this was a head-to-head -head trial, um, saturation versus extended, and again showing similar numbers, uh, and uh, these uh, two um, types uh, are able to sample the anterior zone. Um, looking at uh, transrectal uh, versus transperineal, um, was there uh, has there been shown to be a big uh, difference in uh, cancer detection rates? Um, there was uh, 
uh, no, no significant difference um, between the two. Um, and uh, again, overall cancer detection around the second biopsy was uh, similar to uh, previous studies. Uh, further exploring the um, transperineal uh, approach, um, uh, some centers have led to the uh, going towards the transperineal template guided mapping biopsy. It has a standardized template and grid. Uh, it's able to uh, sample the anterior zone and transitional zone well. It um, does use ultrasound to visualize a needle placement, uh, but requires uh, general anesthesia. Um, this was um, uh, initially used for uh, brachytherapy. Uh, it has a, a grid system uh, for assurance of sampling all of the zones of the prostate. <coughs> Um, looking at the TTMB, uh, large uh, large study over uh, 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 370 patients, uh, detection rate was found to be higher uh, in numbers 55 percent, 42 percent, 34 percent with uh, one to three uh, negative biopsies respectively. 56 uh, percent uh, of these cancers were uh, gliosaurus greater or equal to seven. Uh, 14 percent of them were um, uh, greater or equal uh, than eight. Um, the, again, it does a good job of detecting anterior and apical aspects uh, of uh, prostate cancer. Um, they did look at patients um, undergoing their first uh, biopsy in this method and found that clinically significant cancer was detected in 75 of these patients, so higher than, than previous numbers. <coughs> uh, schematic diagram of the uh, TTMB. Um, uh, found that uh, as you uh, went f uh, further looking at the patient with previous negative ultrasound biopsies that the ones, the cancers that were detected um, using this new method were in the uh, um, uh, anterior uh, zone of the, uh, of the prostate and just uh, pathological representation of anterior cancer. Uh, nomograms have been instilled uh, looking at predicting uh, the um, uh, accuracy of, uh, of finding uh, cancer on the uh, repeat biopsy. Um, uh, not, gen not readily used around, but they have uh, shown um, that uh, it, it can predict um, your detection rate on, uh, on uh, future uh, biopsies um, using the parameters that we've discussed. Uh, so uh, one of the things we always hear of uh, is uh, you know, worried about uh, transitional zone cancers um, uh, and using the, uh, the usage of uh, transurethral section of prostate um, for, uh, for a biopsy in a patient with um, elevated PSA. Uh, a couple studies just to, to show. Um, so uh, these patients all underwent negative biopsies, a median PSA of 8.6. Um, and uh, 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 prostate cancer was detected in 8% uh, of these cases. Uh, again, similar, uh, similar results. Um, uh, median PSA of 12. Uh, 12 patients uh, were, 16% were found with T1A disease and only 4% with T1B disease. Um, I want to uh, uh, switch gears a little bit and talk about the use of uh, uh, MRI in uh, prostate cancer detection and, um, and its use in uh, uh, de detecting disease with negative biopsies. Uh, looking at um, MRI guided biopsy, uh, MR spectroscopy, diffusion weighted MRI, uh, dynamic contrast MRI, and then finally um, uh, MRI and ultrasound fusion. Uh, so T1 weighted. Um, it's able to detect bone mats and large lymph nodes, not really used for uh, prostate cancer detection. Uh, T2 weighted is MRI is where we can uh, detect low signal, uh, low signals and detect prostate cancer and also detects extra uh, capsular extension very well. MRI guided biopsy is uh, using uh, real time <coughs> MRI to locate and actually biopsy the lesion under, M under MRI. And then MR uh, ultrasound fusion is combining uh, previously attained uh, MRI images um, uh, to uh, ultrasound for 
uh, real-time use and, uh, and biopsy. Uh, so first, just uh, MR MRI guided biopsy. Um, uh, a few studies out there, uh, although very uh, uh, time consuming, um, uh, does show uh, successful rates of uh, detection and be able to uh, isolate and locate the lesion uh, easily and uh, biopsy. Uh, a couple pictures from uh, MRI uh, looking at the uh, uh, suspicious um, area. Um, this patient underwent two previous negative biopsies, rising PSA. Um, these are T2 weighted uh, endo, endo MRIs and, and uh, um, also MRI guided. Um, adjustments are made of the uh, needle guided system um, uh, based on the oblique image. Uh, repositioning is performed uh, throughout uh, the MRI, so obviously. Uh, uh, is uh, quite a, a time-consuming uh, procedure, but does uh, uh, have good accuracy. In this study of 30 patients, the, um, they were able to uh, measure the volume of uh, suspicious area uh, to uh, 0.83. Uh, only uh, five cores are uh, used when they uh, isolate the um, uh, localized area. Um, and uh, uh, prostate cancer, clinically extended prostate cancer, was detected in, um, uh, Fifty-six percent of these uh, biopsies. Um, some of the studies I read, uh, one biopsy would take uh, about sixty minutes. Um, so some of the further uh, MR uh, tests that we that are being used for um, uh, prostate cancer detection and leading to uh, a possible biopsy are MR uh, spectroscopy. Um, it's uh, 3D a proton MRI of the prostate uh, is performed. It can be performed at the same at the same time as a regular <coughs> MRI using commercially available software. Again, this procedure takes quite long; takes about an hour. Um, and what it does, it, it characterizes uh, metabolites within the tissue um, as per endorectal MRI. It detects uh, citrate, choline, uh, creatinine, and polyamines, but in the tissue using the computer software and, and the uh, MRI picture. Um, so you can see a suspicious area um, in, the, uh, in the graft um, and the uh, MRSI um, uh, findings. Uh, difference between um, uh, healthy and uh, cancer tissue are um, uh, the fact that uh, prostate cancer uh, has uh, low citrate um, and high choline um, uh, metabolites versus uh, healthy, um, uh, normal, uh, benign tissue, uh, which is high citrate and high choline. So a ratio is used um, to detect um, uh, prostate cancer in these uh, in these cases. Uh, just a quick overview of uh, looking at these at uh, MRSI. Um, uh, six articles were reviewed. Uh, in patients that had uh, underwent two previous negative biopsies. Uh, detection rate uh, was 40%, uh, uh, pretty broad sensitivity and uh, specific specificity and uh, relatively good accuracy. Um, so these are, are images are then used to guide um, further biopsy. Um, looking at diffusion weighted imaging. Um, Diffusion uh, weight imaging uh, provides information relating to molecular movement of water in the biologic tissues. Uh, the diffusion properties are related to the amount of interstitial free water permeabili uh, permeability. Uh, extracellular and intraductal wa uh, water molecules move freely. Um, uh, so in healthy prostate tissue, the apparent diffusion coefficients are uh, nice and high, uh, whereas in um, uh, prostate cancer, um, the uh, normal glandular t uh, tissue is destroyed, uh, revealing it, um, resulting in a higher cellular density compared to normal tissue, resulting in a decreased uh, uh, ADCs. The um, diffusion weight imaging um, derives its image uh, contrast from the differences in the motion of water molecules between these tissues. Uh, ca uh, cancer um, has a restricted diffusion. Uh, compared to normal tissue because of these uh, higher densities and, and um, 
glandular structure. So the ADCs are calculated for each pixel on the image um, and displayed as uh, a parametric uh, map. Uh, a couple of images uh, uh, showing uh, detection. So uh, uh, an image on the left-hand side, T2 weighted um, MRI, difficult to detect uh, any uh, cancers. Using the diffu diffusion weighted imaging, we can detect um, uh, the ADC. Uh, so this, uh, this patient underwent two previous negative biopsies of the uh, rising um, uh, PSA. This led to a biopsy, uh, which uh, revealed Gleason 7 uh, prostate cancer. Uh, a nice picture of using um, diffusion weighted imaging compared to gross pathology, um, and uh, able to see it picked up on the DWI uh, comparatively to the uh, gross specimen. Um, uh, several studies quote sensitivities of 84% and specific specificities of um, 86% and uh, higher than uh, T2 alone. Um, further exploring uh, MRI, um, uh, looking at uh, uh, dynamic contrast enhanced MRI, DCE, um, consists of uh, Acquisition of uh, sequential images during passage of contrast. Uh, it looks at the pharmacokinetics of this. This can be estimated or measured quantitatively or qualitatively. Um, so, uh, uh, DC uh, it takes advantage of the uh, differences in vascularity of tumors and normal tissue. Um, like other tumors, prostate cancer uh, induces angiogenesis, the formation of new blood vessels and they have a higher permeability than normal tissue. As a re result of this, both, both the uptake and the washout of this contrast material is more rapid in tumor than in normal tissue. Uh, specialized software is used to calculate the features such as um, time to peak enhancement, relative peak enhancement, washout rate in, in uh, individual image voxels. Um, these results are displayed as color-coded images, which draws attention to the tumors. Uh, DCE, um, um, amongst all the uh, um, uh, uses of MRI, is considered to be the most sensitive um, uh, sequence for identification of and staging of, uh, of the disease, as well as um, uh, uh, transitional zone cancers. Uh, this, uh, all these studies uh, also obviously have a role for uh, uh, possible recurrence um, in, uh, in disease. Uh, looking at a couple of studies, looking at uh, 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 um, DCE MRI patients underwent uh, two previous negative biopsies, underwent DCE and relatively high sensitivity and specificity. Um, these uh, studies were compared, or were eventually, um, uh, com the pathology was compared to with the targeted biopsy and then confirmed with a uh, radical biopsy. Uh, this was a randomized uh, uh, control study looking at the combination of dynamic contrast uh, enhancement and MRSI, um, the uh, numbers between the two groups, 45% um, detection rate using the uh, imaging and a 24% uh, percent, uh, detection rate uh, random. Uh, so combined uh, using DCE and MRSI uh, had high sensitivities and specificities. Um, so all these uh, DCE, uh, MRSI, um, diffusion weighted imaging kind of lead to uh, what's uh, hot right now um, is uh, MR and uh, ultrasound fusion. So this is a real-time biopsy. Uh, the pictures are uh, previously obtained from prostate MRIs. Um, they're actively fused to real-time ultrasound. The operator is able to perform directed biopsies at fused MRI identified targets. Um, it uh, gives you the uh, diagnostic power of the uh, uh, prostate MRI plus um, flexible, rapid, or inexpensive ultrasound um, procedure. Uh, total scores of the MRI images are uh, summed up using the, uh, for, for, to give the total multi-parametric uh, multi MRI score. Um, the diffusion weighted imaging is given the highest weight followed by, by a dynamic contrast. So obviously a higher score is a higher chance of uh, cancer and then go towards MR and ultrasound uh, biopsy. Um, 
uh, one of the images used, and this is uh, what we can see doing um, the uh, uh, real-time uh, ultrasound um, MR, ultrasound fusion biopsy. So a 3D image um, is created, and um, <coughs> lesions are detected um, under ultrasound guidance. Um, so uh, there have yet to be any uh, uh, studies out about the actual detection rates um, for uh, cancer using the MR ultrasound fusion, although it is being used uh, heavily with um, uh, focal therapy um, already. Uh, some of the studies that are doing are to test the accuracy of, of this. Um, uh, using uh, uh, phantom models, um, they uh, found a, in a targeting area of uh, error, so targeting error of uh, uh, 1.52 uh, millimeters and uh, an actual system registration area of uh, 0.8 millimeters uh, difference um, using the uh, uh, MR and ultrasound uh, fusion. So uh, extremely accurate and obviously you uh, can see the uh, attraction for um, using it for uh, focal therapy down the road. Uh, a couple slides on, uh, I guess, the whole uh, gist of this talk. Is any of this worth it? Um, the significance of, uh, of the prostate cancer detected. Um, you know, obviously there's uh, differing um, uh, studies out there. Um, uh, 715 uh, patients with uh, PSA between 2.5 and 20 underwent um, uh, uh, biopsies. Um, this this uh, interesting study looked at uh, split the groups up between transrectal and transperineal biopsy. Um, they found that uh, in, in over 250 were actually diagnosed with prostate cancer. Um, then they looked at the group that uh, had cancer detected on the transperineal but not the transrectal uh, uh, group, and 21% uh, of these uh, cases were detected in that way. Um, uh, Gleason score was equal to or less than 6 on uh, final pathology. and. Um, the actual uh, transrectal ultrasound was only positive in 25% uh, of the cases um, with the Gleason score less than 6. Um, so the ones that were missed uh, with the routine transrectal 12-core uh, guided biopsy uh, were relatively low grade and low volume um, in this uh, study. Uh, a large study looking, uh, comparing the uh, uh, negative biopsy results with uh, uh, radical um, uh, pathology. 50% um, of cancers were detected on the first biopsy, 23 on the second, and 21 on the third or later. Looking at these three groups, um, there was actually no difference in uh, Epstein criteria um, amongst them uh, in the uh, repeat biopsy um, uh, pathology. Uh, so just a uh, final slide of uh, 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 conclusion slide, um, kind of uh, what's, uh, I guess, recommended in a few of the um, uh, papers out there uh, in the face of a negative uh, prostate biopsy. The initial biopsy should be 10 or 14 cores, including the lateral cores. Um, that's negative and your suspicion is still uh, raised. Uh, you're going to go towards a, a saturation biopsy. Again, if um, uh, your suspicion is high, you're going to uh, use the um, uh, more formal uh, MRI uh, procedures uh, for localization of the tumor and also down the road MR and ultrasound fusion will um, likely be uh, more available and uh, used in these cases. Great. Thank you very much.